Hey, good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Arlington Employment Center for this absolutely exciting announcement about the Connect to Compete initiative. It's, and I'm Howard Feldstein, and I'm the director of the Arlington Employment Center. And I certainly want to welcome our honored guests. First of all, Secretary of Labor, Tony Solis, the Chairman of the Federal Communication Commission, Julius Gentkowski, the Director of the Institute of Museum and Library Sciences, Sheldon Hildreth, Lee Davenport, who is the Director of the CTC Initiative, and then Frank O'Brien, who is our client, who's had a tremendous success using digital technology in helping with his job search. This is such an important initiative. The world of job search has changed dramatically in the last several years. No longer do you go to the store, buy some nice bonded paper with 20% linen content, as I remember from my job search, get a copy of the Sunday paper one ad, type a resume and send it off. It's all digital now. Jobs are posted online. Applications are done online. We have Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and Tumblr and probably a new application that will be invented as I speak today. So you need to be digitally connected. And we, along with our partners, the library system, particularly Arlington County Library, know this. We make digital media available to our clients. We instruct them in digital media. As you can see, we make them sit at computers to learn digital media because that's the job search of the future and the present, and that's the key now to economic self-security in this country. And we all want that as the right of all American workers. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Lee Davenport, who is the director of the CTC Initiative. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm really thrilled to be here today on behalf of Connect to Compete and our chairman, Ben Hecht, who couldn't make it today. Uh, thank you to Secretary Solis, uh, Chairman Janikowski, and Director Hildreth for your leadership. Um, and thanks to all the folks here at Arlington Employment Center for hosting us. Connect to Compete is the largest and most collaborative effort in the United States, mobilizing the federal government philanthropy, and the private sector to harness technology and the transformational power of the Internet. In my role as director at Connect and Pete, I work with our partners to boost access to digital learning and broadband adoption to improve the lives of low-income Americans. For a quick program update, we've just completed a very successful 60-day pilot in San Diego, and we are overwhelmed by the positive results. We look forward to sharing specifics with you in the coming weeks. This summer, we are gearing up for a nationwide Ad Council campaign focused on digital literacy, launching early next year. We are hard at work designing new tools to help Americans locate free digital literacy training opportunities near them. We are glad to have the American Job Center Network as a key partner, as well as America's public libraries, Best Buy's Geek Squad, and many nonprofit partners. Improving digital literacy is a guiding principle of our organization. We work to ensure that more Americans can access important education, job search, and healthcare information online. Our purpose is to ensure that substantially all Americans understand how the power of technology can improve their lives so that America's workforce can compete in the global economy. Today's event reflects a critical piece, ensuring that Americans can find places to learn about relevant content online and gain more advanced digital skills so they can connect to compete. The Department of Labor's commitment to expand awareness of digital literacy training centers and the FCC's tremendous leadership in launching Connect Compete are moving this agenda forward. I again thank the Secretary and the Chairman for their commitment to this important issue. Thanks. Thank you. I would now like to introduce Ms. Susan Hildreth, who is the Director of the Institute of Museum and Library Services, who will talk about the very important role that the public library system will play 
in rolling out this initiative and making access to it available to so many people. Well, thank you. I'm so impressed to be here today, particularly with the folks who are behind me using this equipment to try to get their lives moving in the right direction. I'm just, I'm honored to be here. I'm delighted to partner with Secretary Solis and FCC Chairman Julia Stanikowski to help community members adopt broadband. America's libraries are engines of transfer transformation. They are community hubs where people get online to find work, get an education, connect to government services, and much more. At the Institute of Museum and Library Services, our grants help to level the playing field and bring opportunity to millions. A recent study found that 77 million people go online at the library every year, and 30 million of those use library computers for workforce needs. Our great partnership with the Department of Labor has supported creative thinking, like co-locating one-stops, like America's Job Centers, with public libraries hosting job fairs and libraries and creating spaces for workforce and small business development. Grants from, from IMLS, that's our acronym, I shouldn't use that so freely here, help to create 21st century libraries that are full of vitality and energy. We believe that the 21st century librarian is an expert information navigator, and we know we all need that in the world of Google, and we're also experts at community engagement. Today's libraries are community anchors contributing to a strong workforce, energized educators, and lifelong learners. We support digital resources, training programs, and outreach to people who experience all kinds of barriers to accessing information. We believe in a democratic society where communities and individuals can thrive because they have great access to information. We are very proud of the work the chairman has done to shine a huge spotlight on the need for digital opportunity to make our nation successful. It is exciting to bring diverse partners to the table who all really want to make a difference, and I look forward to continuing to help connect to compete, see to see to succeed. Thank you. I now want to introduce to me, and my, I'm sorry for everyone else, who I consider to be the most important speaker today, Frank O'Brien, who is one of our clients who has used digital technology extensively in his own job search. Wow. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Frank O'Brien. I'm a member of the Virginia Army National Guard, and I recently returned uh, from Afghanistan. I want to say thank you to everyone here today for providing not only the center, but access to these resources and these tools on behalf of not only me, but the millions of unemployed and other job seekers out there, especially returning veterans. Um, this has been absolutely a lifeline to us, and I can't thank them enough for everything that they've uh, done for us. Um, you know, we kind of call it the World Wide Web, but what it really is, is it's the last sort of safety net available for job seekers because the job search is transitioning to online. Your network of contacts through social media like LinkedIn, which I encourage everyone out there to use, and I can train you to use it. Um, it's all out there online. And for me, in order to sort of manage my cash flow, like many job seekers during this, this difficult time, uh, the job center is a place where I can go and actually have a chair and sit and use a computer. And that's that's making the difference for me from, you know, um, having skip meals versus, you know, coming here and, uh, and getting access to resources. So this has been a fantastic opportunity. I've learned so much. When I first started this, this, this job process, um, I was part of the the 25% uh, unemployed veterans, and within three months, they got me fully up to speed to where now I am training command sergeant majors and colonels on how to conduct their job search for when they're retired. So if you're having a hard time and you're kind of independent, just, just come down here to the career centers, to the libraries. We have books. We have resources. You're going to learn so much. It is going to make your job search so much more effective. Don't waste any time. Do it now, today. Uh, and to anyone that's looking to hire a PR communications professional, <laughs> I can be found online. Thank you very much.
I would now like to introduce the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, Julius Janikowski, who's going to talk about the rollout of this exciting program. Well, thank you very much. First, uh, Frank O'Brien, uh, thank you for your service. Uh, and um, thank you for uh, symbolizing what we're all trying to accomplish here. I, I, I'm just so impressed uh, that you came here, learned the skills that you did, but that you've gone on to become part of this effort to train others is really just a wonderful thing. Uh, and I want to thank all the people who are here who are part of uh, this effort here at the Training Center uh, to help people like Frank, help other returning veterans, help other people from these communities uh, learn how to find jobs and have the right skills for jobs in the 21st century. Thank you for your service. Uh, and uh, Howard Feldstein, thank you for leading this, uh, this tremendous operation. Susan Hildreth, uh, 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 the work that you do with our libraries, uh, turning them into centers of opportunities in our communities, thank you. Uh, Lee Davenport of Connect to Compete. Uh, I'm going to come back and talk about Connect to Compete, but you know, what a wonderful thing. Uh, that this is uh, doing, and uh, of course, um, uh, I, I, I want to thank the people at the Federal Communications Commission who've been working very hard uh, on this public-private uh, initiative and others, uh, Josh Gottheimer, who's here, Jordan Eustam, Kevin Almasy, and Maya Palur. Uh These folks wake up every day and think creatively about how uh, to help people uh, in need in this tough economy take advantage of the opportunities that are there. And finally, thank you, Secretary Solis, uh, for your incredible leadership, for the work that you're doing uh, at the Labor Department to ensure that American workers have the digital skills they need to compete in the 21st century economy. Now, uh, I'm here today, the Chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, with uh, Secretary Solis, our Secretary of Labor, because our separate agencies share a common goal, creating jobs. Uh, at the FCC, which is the agency that focuses on our communications technology infrastructure, uh, my primary focus this chairman has been promoting innovation, investment, and competition uh, in the broadband sector to benefit consumers, grow our economy, enhance U.S. competitiveness, and create jobs. And over the three plus years, the story of America's broadband sector is a story of real success. Over the last three years, the U.S. has regained global leadership. Uh, particularly in mobile. The U.S. leads the world in 3G subscribers by a wide margin, and we're leading the world in rolling out 4G LTE, the next mobile broadband standard at scale. The percentage of smartphones globally that uh, have the U.S. Uh, operating system is, has grown from 25% to 80% in just the last three years. The apps economy, you heard LinkedIn mentioned before, continues to grow. Uh, U.S. firms and developers are leading the way. On the wired side, we're making real progress as well. Uh, three years ago, the percentage of Americans who lived in areas uh, with networks that were capable of speeds above 100 megabits was uh, 20%. Today, it's over 80%, putting us near the top of the world. Uh, these numbers add up to meaningful uh, job creation. One study estimated that wireless has contributed to the creation of 1.6 million U.S. jobs in just the past few years. The mobile apps economy barely existed in early 2009. Today it alone supports 500,000 jobs. Deloitte estimates that investments in 4G will create 770,000 new U.S. jobs over the next four years. Uh, there is good news in the broadband sector, but of course we know that there are real challenges. Uh, just looking first at the broadband sector, we need, to, we need to continue to see increases in broadband speed and capacity. Uh, we need to be speaking about gigabits, not megabits. We need to be working uh, to close the broadband adoption and deployment gaps. We need to tackle the spectrum crunch. Uh, and we need to focus, as we have been, on the challenge that we're here to talk about today. The millions of Americans who are being bypassed by the job opportunities being created by the broadband revolution. Uh, that gap threatens to leave those Americans behind, hurting our economy and our competitiveness. Now, roughly one in three Americans, nearly 100 million people, still haven't adopted broadband at home. 
and about 66 million Americans don't have sufficient digital literacy, digital literacy skills. Uh, they don't know how to uh, use a computer, use the internet, search, upload documents, upload resumes, upload photos. Why does this matter? It matters because the costs of digital exclusion uh, are rising. The costs of digital exclusion are rising uh, because the opportunities of digital are rising. Uh, whether it's education opportunities, healthcare opportunities, and as we already heard today, job opportunities. Uh, in today's world, if you want to find a job, you need to go online uh, because job postings have moved from newspapers to the internet. And increasingly, if you want to apply for a job, you have to be online. Um, uh, 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 most job applications now uh, are required to be submitted online, and so they require digital literacy skills. If you don't know how to use a computer, use the internet, fill out an online form, upload information about yourself, you're just not eligible for a lot of the jobs that exist. And we do know that there is a skills gap in the United States. Uh, at, at the same time that we need to create more and more jobs in the United States, we also need to do the kind of work we're doing today, which is to make sure Americans have the skills they need to fill the jobs that are available. In many communities around the country, there are job postings, many, as there are people who are unemployed. And the reason for that gap is the digital literacy gap. Uh, that's why uh, we launched uh, this initiative, the Connect to Compete initiative, uh, together with our friends at Connect to Compete, uh, at IMLS, uh, together with uh, companies uh, in the cable industry and others, companies like Best Buy, uh, to focus on uh, what we can all do together uh, to increase digital literacy, uh, help close that gap, uh, and help people like we've heard find the jobs uh, that are available. I'm so pleased that uh, Secretary Solis uh, and the Labor Department have joined this initiative uh, with such a great level of enthusiasm and excitement. Uh, they're uh, 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 putting their resources behind Connect to Compete uh, which uh, has been focused on creative ways to tackle these problems. Uh, one of the things that Connect to Compete has done uh, is worked with various industry sectors, including the cable industry, to create uh, a low-cost broadband service, under $10 a month, for families who have kids on school lunch programs. A big, big deal that's about a third of the price that otherwise would be available. Uh, as part of Connect to Compete, companies like the Dentech are offering uh, low-cost, $150 refurbished computers that are available to people in the program. When you combine that with the digital literacy initiatives that we see from IMLS at our libraries uh, and the kind of um, uh, contributions that these job centers can make, uh, you see a, 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 a fully developed program that's designed to help Americans uh, in need of both jobs and digital literacy, get what they need to find economic security. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, Connect to Compete is announcing today as part of this initiative is a nationwide database of digital literacy providers and a digital literacy training finder tool. There are resources out there, like this one right here in Arlington, and uh, it can be a challenge to get the word out to people who can take advantage of the resources. And so that's one of the things that Connect to Compete is uh, focusing on. Uh, the service will be accessible from the internet, from mobile broadband, or via a toll-free number. It'll be populated with thousands of locations comprised of the nation's libraries, and libraries are becoming such incredible centers of opportunity in our communities, also at schools, public computing centers, nonprofit training centers, and now, thanks to Secretary Solis, America's job centers will be in the database as well. And of course, everybody may be asking, how will people who uh, don't have digital skills yet uh, use the tool to learn about digital skills? Well, the Finder tool uh, and the resources will be promoted as part of the ad councils 
forthcoming national digital, digital literacy and campaign on TV, radio, and other platforms, which will launch in early 2013 under the Connect to Compete banner. Uh, this is a tremendous thing. The Ad Council is the entity that brought us campaigns against drunk driving, uh, 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 other important campaigns that we all know about. Uh, I commend the Ad Council for recognizing that digital literacy is a national challenge. Uh, and that entities like the Ad Council, uh, media companies that give ad time to this effort, uh, I commend them for recognizing that digital literacy should be on the short list of challenges we need to attack uh, in this economy where there's so much potential opportunity if we close the digital literacy gap. Uh, digital literacy gap. So thank you again to America's Job Centers for joining this cause uh, and to all the partners of the Connect to Compete Coalition working together we can seize the benefits of broadband for all Americans. And with that, it's my pleasure to welcome Secretary Hilda Solis. Hilda Solis gets that we need to be preparing U.S. workers for the jobs of the future. She gets that in today's world, the jobs of the future really are the jobs of today. Uh, Secretary Solis has worked with tremendous energy uh, on these initiatives, we couldn't be luckier to have Secretary Solis in this role at this time, going back to her time in Congress. Secretary Solis was one of the first proponents of training, for example, for green jobs. Uh, and I'm very pleased to be partnering with this strong leader to make sure that all Americans have the skills they need to compete in the digital economy. Uh, please welcome Labor Secretary Hilda Solis. <laughs> Well, I can sense it's getting a little hot, <laughs> and, and I mean in an exciting way, and I want to thank, obviously, the Chairman uh, uh, Jankowski, uh, Julius, for your friendship, and just spearheading this. I know we spoke about this more than a year ago, and I was really excited to hear about the potential opportunities. I also want to thank Howard Feldman for opening up the Arlington Employment Center and for being such a gracious host and allowing for us to use this facility. And also want to thank uh, Operations Director Lee Davenport for his good work and leadership on a Connect to Compete. And I also want to thank Susan Hildreth, who uh, is here representing the Institute of Museum and Library Services, something that we've been talking about for the past two and a half years about our partnership with libraries and how essential that is. And I also want to thank Frank O'Brien for just sharing his tremendous story. I mean, he is living proof of what works in America and how important it is to utilize services that are offered here at particular uh, job sourcing uh, centers like this that can help connect people with the right skills and the right training and give them that hope and empowerment to move on and to hopefully share that as a living example of how these things can all work together. Uh, Frank, uh, you're doing so much working with us. You're making it possible for us to, to showcase these efforts with public, private, nonprofit partners and making sure that people really do understand that they need to be prepared for the jobs, not just of today, but also for tomorrow. And you heard it time and time again already from our speakers here, how important it is for people to understand that they need more training, in particular, uh, knowing how to operate a computer, but also knowing how to be able to navigate the internet and browse websites and use search engines to find these new jobs. I couldn't agree more that it's so important for us. Half of today's jobs, as you know, require technological skills. And this percentage is expected to grow by 77% in the next decade alone. And more than 80% of Fortune 500 companies like Target, as an example, will require folks to go online to fill out an application. And however, we know that about 100 million Americans do not have current access to broadband. And, and 66 million of those Americans don't use the internet right now and have no di digital literacy skills. This problem is particularly hard on underserved communities and vulnerable communities. And that's something I know a little bit about as a former member, a uh, House representative who worked on the telecom committee, understanding that it was very, very important for us to bridge that gap. So I'm so happy that the FCC commissioner is involved in this effort and continues to fight so that there's equality and justice in how we are accessing those uh, particular centers of information. I'm proud to announce today that the Department of Labor will be joining the FCC in this very critical effort. 
as a part of the Connect to Compete or C2C Dig Digital Literacy Coalition, the Department of Labor will be able to expand its outreach to communities across this country to provide better access to employment and job training services for all. Much of this important work is carried out right now at our American Job Centers, just like this one here today. And we are going to join C2C as a digital literacy provider in partnering with our outreach efforts. Our American Job Centers form a network of nearly 2,800 local employment training centers around this country. Everything from resume writing to computing, computer skills to interviewing and uh, coaching techniques are all, all offered at these particular centers. And we add to a nationwide network of thousands of free digital literacy providers, including our public libraries, which we know uh, so many uh, individuals go to to be able to access broadband and rely for services on the internet. Very important component to how we make sure that people have access to information about jobs. These are just a few ways that our partnership will help to ensure that more people in more communities have access to broadband. First, my department will work with other C2C partners to develop better and more effective digital literacy curriculum. Second, American Job Centers will eventually serve as an outreach partner informing job seekers in C2C broadband adoption offerings. This includes information on discounted internet service, low-cost lap laptop for families that qualify under the free lunch uh, program. And finally, the American Job Centers will be added to the C2C's Digital Literacy Finder tool when it is launched. Job seekers will soon be able to use this Finder app to find free, nearby digital literacy training and public com computing centers and locations. There are many reasons why I am thrilled and excited about this partnership. But one of my favorites is this. In providing more access to the internet, we provide not only more access to job opportunities, but also to classroom and online job training programs. Training and certifications available online, such as Cisco and Microsoft, are increasingly valuable. A 2011 survey found that the average base salary for a Microsoft certified professional is well over $80,000 a year. Yet there are more than 20 million Americans that are unemployed or underemployed, and many lack broadband at home and digital skills. More broadly, there are about 12 million Americans, as you know, right now that are looking for work. And currently, we have about 3.7 million jobs that remain unfilled. So just think about it. We talk a lot in Washington about creating new jobs, but it's so important that we think critically about steps we can take right now to fill those jobs that are currently open. Too many displaced workers are having trouble getting job offers, and too many companies are having trouble finding workers with specific skills they need. So the Department of Labor's mission couldn't be any clearer. To speed our economic recovery, we must quickly train up our workforce to fill those jobs now, and not just wait until tomorrow. The work of the partnership we're fostering today addresses those issues directly. By putting more people and more job training opportunities on the web, we can make it easier and faster for job seekers to get online at home, get certified, and compete for those 21st century jobs. As your Labor Secretary, that's my number one goal, and I'm confident that the collaboration taking place here today will help to get us there. So thank you again, all of our partners and all the staff here, and all of our friends that are behind us and this administration in making sure that we get people to work. So with that, I want to thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Again, I want to thank everyone for coming today. I certainly want to thank our honored guests. And all I can say now is, if you're looking for a job, find an American Job Center, find a public library, get a computer, and get to work. Thank you all very much.